I did this in another section, but it's a good problem because it has, again, some interesting parts to it. So let me do this problem here. It's a good one to follow those steps. So you have a frame that is made of these components <coughs> and these pieces. <coughs> this frame is made to carry a load through the pulley that is attached to the end. The weight that is hanging here is 80 pounds. So this cable is attached to this piece or the component of this frame at this point, let me label them A, B, C, um, okay, D, E, we call this F, and G. Uh, let me also give you all the dimensions here, okay, the radius of the pulley is one foot, uh, so obviously, okay, this is given as uh, three feet, three feet, one foot. Okay, so that's the problem. We want to find all the unknown uh, forces, internal forces at those joints. Okay, which is always the objective of frame analysis. So remember, as I, I'm emphasizing again and again, that the most important part in a frame analysis is the first four steps, free body diagram. Step one, of course, is given. Step one is the easiest one. Just set up the x, y coordinates so we can keep track of the correct directions of each unknown force. But it is a step two, three, and four that are really important. The step two is taking everything apart. The supports, all the members, all the connections. Take all the connections apart, okay? Step three, draw all free body diagrams. Means free body diagram for each member and for the structure as a whole. While you're doing that, I call that a step four, but it's actually part of a step three. So I put an asterisk here, and that was watch out for two force members, and also remember third law of mechanics, right? Which is, remember, third law, for every action, there is a reaction equal and opposite to it, right? So at any joint we have, if you take them apart, we have forces that are acting one member and equal opposite forces on the other member at that point, okay? So these first four steps, as I have said, it's 85% of the problem. Not 85% of the grade, but 85% of the understanding of how to do the problem, okay? So the next steps are actually easier. So let me finish these first, okay? So I will first take these supports out, so draw the free body diagram of the structure as a whole. So remove that one. How many unknowns you have there? Is a roller. One. One. 
How many of you knows you have here is a pen to E X E Y? How many of you knows who I have here is a pen? One. Who said one? You're right, two points. Watch out. Connected only at the two ends. End connections are pins. No load acts along this member, or in other words, the member is not even connected to anything else. For instance, here, you have two of those criteria met, but then you have somewhere along this member, a load is acting due to the connection of this cable. If you do not detect these two force members, your life would be miserable in, in terms of solving for all the unknowns. So let's say I'm just assuming that the force is acting this way. So this is so these are unknowns on this on the structure as a whole. So now let's draw the free body diagram of each individual member. Okay? So you have E, X, E, Y. You have this force, which is coming through this cable. I, let me call that T. At B, you have, let's make the assumption that these internal forces are acting that way. So, therefore, on this member, if you consider that, at B, you have forces equal in magnitude and opposite in direction there. You have this AX. So at C, at this point C, if you assume this member, okay, the forces are acting like this. This is RDC. So here, you have the force R, D, C, right? This is the joint C, okay? This is joint C, okay? And at F, right, you will have forces that I'm just assuming that they're acting like this, okay? Intentionally, let's just assume those are the directions. So this is Number three, uh, free body diagram three, free body diagram four. How about the pulley? Free body diagram five. You have this force, T, this force, 80 pounds. You have F, X. Since you made the assumption is that way, let, uh, you have to be consistent. So that means this force is assumed to be like this and this is F sub Y, and this I call free body diagram five. So we have five free body diagrams. So this is the first four steps. The remaining three steps are the easiest part. You just have to keep track of things and apply equations of equilibrium. So what was step five? You start with a free body diagram that has the least number of unknowns, apply the equations of equilibrium, find out the unknowns, as many unknowns as you can using that free body diagram. You can quickly see that you have four here. Remember, two force members, their free body diagram you, is useless. You cannot use it. They're, that doesn't give you any information because equations of equilibrium are just automatically satisfied without giving you the answers, right? So we have one, two, three, four free body diagrams. This has the least number of unknowns, only two. So I'm going to use that. So write summation of forces along x is equal to zero. I have minus fx. And this is obviously also 80 pounds. Frictionless pulley forces on the two sides of the cable are the same. So I have minus 80 equal to zero. So fx comes out to be negative 80 pounds, which means the assumed direction for fx is wrong. So I just quickly fix that, not on, only on this free body diagram, but on all corresponding free body diagram where that force appears. <coughs> and I put an x a mark here because I have, so I don't need this anymore, right? 
So put a check mark wherever that unknown appears on all three body diagrams, okay? The next one, summation of forces along y is equal to zero. So you can see that Fy minus 80 is zero and Fy comes out to be 80 pounds. Positive, assume direction is right. So put a check mark again wherever it appears, okay? So you've used up all equations of equilibrium here on this diagram. You have no more use for that, cross that out, so you can keep track of how many free body diagram you still have left, which is three. Now let's look at which one has the least number of unknowns. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? This one down here. This one is, right? And then one, two, three, four, right? So it doesn't matter which one you start first. I'm going to start with four, okay? And I did not pay attention or did not respect Mr. St. Virignon as much as I asked you to do. I should have resolved this into its component, right? And you know this slope here. This is four, this is six or three, two, so this is square root 13. So this one is then two over square root 13, R D C, and this one is uh, uh, three over square root 13, R D C, okay? So what I will do, so I did not label actually this one. So here I had used free body diagram five. I'm gonna to switch to free body diagram four. And I will take summation of moments at B is equal to zero. Why? Because I would get rid of these unknowns, this unknown, and this is of course going through that. So this unknown also, so you end up with only one unknown that appears in this equation. That's always the intention of using submersion of moments about point of intersection of as many unknowns as possible, right? So if I do that, take submersion of moments here, I have, this is gonna generate a negative moment, minus two over the square root 13 R D C times this distance, okay, which is three, right, negative. Then you have this one, Fy, we have that 80, so it would be negative 80 times four, moment of this, about that. Then you have, this one doesn't generate any moment. So you only, you, you will see that both of them are negative, right? So RDC, in terms of its value, comes out to be 192.3 negative. That means the assumed direction is wrong. So I'm going to correct that there. So this is the correct direction then. And this is the correct direction here, okay? So um, I found, of course, <coughs> RDC. So this is done, this is done. This is going to be changed the sign because I changed the direction. So now if I write summation of forces along y is equal to zero, I have two over square root 13 times 192.3, okay? I have negative 80, okay? And negative by is equal to zero. By comes out to be I think 26.7, uh, came out to be positive. That means the assumed direction is right. Again, put a check mark here. That means we are done. We have only BX and AX left here, and then BY here is also done. Yes? Why in a free body diagram four and five are that? 
Which one? Here? Yes, they're, they're both opposite. You mean F A, F X and F Y? Yeah, and then compared to the one above it, they're... No, these are, actually, they are the opposite, right? They should be, right? Right? Whatever you assume here, the opposite of those forces should be here, vice versa. Is that because of the pulley? Not because of the pulley. When you take any two members apart, it is true also at B. B, this member and this member are connected at point B, right? So when you take them apart, whatever forces, internal forces you assume, acting on this one, law of action and reaction. Opposite forces, <coughs> equal in magnitude, opposite direction, are acting on the corresponding one. Yes? Uh, this was acting this way, okay? See, this is, this is the force. In other words, this is what happens. If I already see he's acting that way, right? Okay, so this is acting like this, and this is acting like this, right? So this is correct, right? Because this is, this is the force acting from RDC <coughs> on this member. So from this number to RDC would be the other way, right? So this is like this, right? Yeah. Right? So that means at that point, you have the opposite, because this is point C, right? So that point C, this is RDC on this member, right? And at the other end, it should be that way, okay? Any other questions? You see that? Good, okay. So, all right, so where were we? We have this, so we have now, uh, we haven't used two more, I mean, we have one more equation here that we haven't used, and that is summation of forces along x is equal to zero. That'll give me a x minus bx, right, plus, 3 over square root 13 times 192.3 minus 80 is equal to 0. But that's it. We have used all the equations that we had on this free body diagram. So this free body diagram is out of the picture. We have two more left, right? So go here. We have three unknowns. So before even getting to that, I know now I can find all the unknowns from that, the remaining ones from that. So let's go to free body diagram number two. What I'll do, I'll take summation of moments at E is equal to zero, okay? So I have <coughs> BY, which is, which is given, we, have, we found it, 26.7, about e, e generates a positive moment, 26 times that distance, three. Same thing with T would be plus 80 times three, okay? Plus BX, okay, times four, okay, is equal to zero. So BX obviously <coughs> comes out to be negative, and BX, I have the answer here. BX should come out to be to, um, uh, 80 pounds, negative 80 pounds from here. That means the assumed direction for BX is not correct. So I have BX like this here, should be like this here. And I found BX, BX, okay? So change this, okay? So that is Bx. Now, if you write summation of forces along x is equal to zero, I have Ex minus Bx, which is 80, plus 80 equal to zero. So Ex comes out to be zero. So this is gone, okay? And if I write summation of forces along y is equal to zero, Okay, I have EY plus BY 
which is 26.7, right, equal to zero. So EY comes out to be negative 26.7 pounds. Again, this tells me the assumed direction for EY is not correct. So this is EY, and we found that one. Okay, so I'm gonna correct this one, and I will need to address that in here also. So I have this, I found this, I had this. Remember, I had one equation that I had not used because it had two unknowns. Now that I have found Bx, I can substitute that here, and that will give me Ax. That's going to come out as, I have the answer here, 160 pounds. And I used up, again, this three-body diagram, right? So how many unknowns do I have left? Nothing. Yes? Wait, so when you found that dx was, was wrong, you flipped the sign in that formula too? Uh, uh, which one, here? Yes, I, sh I should. Yes, yes, absolutely. Good point. Yes. I didn't do that, which I should have. Yes, you have to correct that. Yes, good point. So, see, as I had promised, was part of that procedure, right? So you completed step six. This, see, what you did, finding all these unknowns, was a step six. What is a step seven now? You have one free body diagram left that you haven't used, which is this one, okay? Now, if you use this free body diagram, right, you will see that the uh, sum of forces along x, y should come out to be zero, and sum of the uh, moments about any point should be zero. So you can use that to verify your answers. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so let me do another problem. So frame problems is basically a practice of getting mastered at free body diagrams, which is the heart of statics, right? So let's see, maybe actually I can do two problems, we'll see. I'm going to do another problem, okay? This is okay. This problem is a good problem. It's just that it's going to take some time to just draw the uh, diagram itself. So. Uh, What I'm going to do is actually a uh, machine problem. And I had told you that machines and frames are the same. We just call them machines because these frames, they are not necessarily permanently attached to anything. 
So that's what we are. Okay, so let's see. Let me label these E, D, C, B. Okay. Drawing the figure is the most time consuming part. And then I realized that I did not do a good job with the geometry of this. Okay. Okay, I think I've done everything right here. So let me now label them A, um, B, C, D, E. Okay, and this is supposed to be not done yet. As the problem states, this is supposed to be 45 degrees. Okay, so this is a uh, pruner, okay, that you use to cut some tiny branches. So in order to cut this little piece of some kind of, some branch of a bush or something, as the problem states, you have to apply 20 Newton force right, which as you push these, obviously these would go towards each other and crush this thing. As the problem uh, states, if you apply these 20 Newton force, okay, uh, we want to find out how much force is generated at this point A or on the branch, assuming that the surface at A is smooth. Of course, the reason it states that surface at A is smooth, meaning that there is no friction, supposedly. We, are not, we haven't talked about friction forces. So you can see that the, this is a, what we call it a machine, not a frame. And the only difference between machines and frames are, first of all, the, they are the same in, with, you know, with respect to the fact that they're made of components connected to each other, except that the machine is free to move. You can put it anywhere. It's not attached externally to a support. That's what this is. You're holding it with your hand and pushing it, okay? So in a way, your hands act as the external support, but this external support is where the external load is acts on this system. But the objective is the same. You want to find all the unknown forces at 
points of connection here, 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 and here. Although the problem is asking you just to find forces here, but I'm going to do all of them. Procedure is exactly the same. You would start with, again, step one, setting up your X and Y coordinates. Step two, okay, take apart And step, I will combine these three and four, draw free body diagrams, and watch out for two coarse members. So these are the, this is 85% of the problem, right? So let's do it that way. So I'm going to take, of course, externally, as far as the external free body diagram, with the machines, you have it, right? That is the structure. So now you need to consider taking these um, apart. So that's what I'm going to do, okay? So let's see. Let's consider this as free body diagram or the component one. So I have <coughs> something like this, okay? So this is C, this is point so this distance is given, this is 25 millimeter, okay, and you have this um, 20 newton, and that uh, dimension should also be, should, I mean, it is also given, because these two are supposedly along the same line, C and B are along the same line, so this distance is also then uh, from uh, this, this whole thing is 150. So how many unknowns do I have at D? Is a pin? One. One. This is a two force member, pin at the two ends, only connected at the two ends, no load as <coughs> on that. So I would have just one unknown. I'm going to call that F of ED. And this is given as 45 degrees. Okay. And at uh, point C is a pin connected to this other member. So I have these two unknown CX and CY, okay? So that's as far as that member goes, right? So let's see. So this I call three body diagram one. So for this member, which is uh, C, E, of course it is the two force member, that would be the free body diagram, which of course, again, is not gonna be of any use, so let's draw the free body diagram of this guy here, which is E. Obviously, if this is going to be F of uh, DE again, okay, which is, or ED, whichever you call that. At point A, when you push this down, think of this, this, the problem states that there is no friction. This is smooth surface. That means, theoretically speaking, this is like a roller, right? So the only force that you have would be in this direction. And the book calls that N, so I'm gonna call that also the same. And at B, so E and B, this was, like 10 millimeters, and from uh, that would be somewhere here. This is B, okay? I have two forces, let's assume Bx and By are like that, okay? And 
So this, I call that that, okay? And then, uh, of course, would be this component. It looks like that this is just one piece, although the book shows it. In other words, this thing is connected to the top part. So it's just one piece. So I'm not sure why it has shown that in, you know, uh, like this, but that's just one piece. So I'm going to draw that also. So you have this three body diagram. Requires, it requires, the only problem is it requires some artistic talent, right, to do these problems. And that is not part of statics. You don't teach, we don't teach it that part of it, right? So, so you have this 20 Newton, okay? I have at B here, these two forces, B, X, B, Y and that A, okay, that's it, okay, so in other words, as I said, the problem makes the assumption that this is one piece, so in a bit, in a bit of it is, it's a bit, um, Forget about this 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 little thing. Yes. Uh, for that guy. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. At this point C, correct. So at point C, and I should have done it like this. Not a good drawing. So you be, so at point C, you also have uh, two uh, unknowns in the opposite direction, right? So C X and C, Y. So this is three body diagram four. So again, let's start uh, with the three body diagram with the least number of unknowns. So let's see what you have here. We have one, two, three, right? We have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So obviously, this is what I will start with, right? So if you start with that one, okay, you get, uh, let me write it down, one, and resolve obviously this force into its components. So this is F E D square root two over two, F E D square root two over two. So. Okay, so that is um, this guy, right? These two are along the same uh, line. Or, uh, so I, if I do that, take summation of four moments, right? About C is equal to zero. This force passes through C, Cx disappears, Cy disappears. So if I take summation of moments here, I have F, <coughs> E D square root two over two <coughs> times this distance <coughs> twenty-five millimeter counterclockwise, then you have this twenty newton force <coughs> which creates that would be actually negative <coughs> plus twenty newton force times this uh, distance which is hundred and fifty minus uh, okay this hundred and fifty uh, minus this much, which is, uh, okay, actually, did I do this right? Yeah, 25 millimeter. Right, that's right. So 25 minus 150. So 150 minus 25 is equal to zero. So from here, you get F of ED, and that I have the answer here, F of ED comes out to be 169.7. came out to be positive, that means the assumed direction is correct. So let's mark those off wherever they appear, here and here, right? 
and uh, where else I have it um, that's it right uh, of course at D that that's the only place they appear okay so yes I understand why you subtract 25 and now should I just do 150 from here like to here to C oh the, I'm taking it with respect to C right, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and I think the one, what, Where's that? Uh, what uh, yeah, what confused me, right, I was, D, yeah, I considered D, yes, right, so it would be 150, you're right, right, okay, good correction, okay, so now I have what, summation of forces along x is equal to zero, so I have negative Cx minus 169.71, Point seven one times square root of 2 over 2 is equal to 0. So Cx comes out to be, okay, Cx, uh, okay, I, no, I uh, don't have the answer here. So how much would that be? Could you give me that quickly? Could you give it to me very quick? One point. How much? One twenty. Um, that would be actually. This would be positive. One twenty exact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One twenty newton. So we have this. Okay. Where else do I have that appear? Uh, that that then here. Okay. And then summation of forces along y is equal to zero. That will give me c y minus again. 169.7, so 2 over 2, plus 20 is equal to 0. So how much would CY be then? 80. 80. Okay, thank you. 80 Newton. So I have CY. I have the CY here. Okay. So... That's it, as far as this three-body diagram. So this three-body diagram is gone, right? So I go now to three-body diagram. Let's see how many unknowns we have. This one, one, two, uh, we have found this one, right? So this is found. So I have one, two, three. Here I have one, two, three. So I can use either one, right? So. <coughs> Let's say I would go to number three, <coughs> right? Mm. Okay, so I have, um, okay, that, that, that's it. So I'm gonna take summation of moments about point B is equal to zero. If I take summation of moment about point B, again, let me resolve this guy, okay? This is 169.7 square root over 2, 169.7, square root 2 over 2. So if I take some additional moments about this, and this distance is given, this is 10 millimeter. So if I take some additional moments, and, and this distance was uh, between B and uh, A, this one was 60, right? Right? So, take some mention of moments about B, I have 169.7 square root 2 over 2 times this distance, which is from E to B is 55. This is 55 millimeter, so that will be positive, 55, okay? This one will also be positive, so it would be 169.7 square root 2 times this vertical distance, which is 10, okay? Then this would be negative, so I will have minus n a times 60 is equal to 0. That will give me n a, and that's going to come out to be 130 Newton, okay? 
problem, of course, and you come across problems like this, maybe even on the exam, the problem was only asking us to find a force that is acting on this branch. But I extended it and I said, okay, let's find all the unknowns at all the joints. So you can see that although we have met the objectives of the problem, we have found this one, right? We can find the remaining unknowns, right? So let's use the same free body diagram. Summation of forces along x, I have negative bx plus 169.7 square root 2 over 2 is equal to 0. That will give me bx. That's going to come out to be 120 also, right? And the direction is right. So I have this, okay? <coughs> okay? And, uh, and I have this one here. And of course, I have found A already. Summation of forces along Y is equal to zero. We have B, Y plus 169.7 square root 2 over 2, which is this one, plus NA, which we found 130 is equal to 0. Okay? That means BY comes out to be negative. How much would that be if you give me that? 250? Great. 50 Newton. So that means the assumed direction for BY is wrong. So we found that one. This is that way. Okay. And as you can see, what happened here? I used free body diagram one and I used free body diagram. Uh, I said free body diagram three, where was the three? Yeah, this one. This one was three, right? So I use free body diagram one and three only, right? And I end up with an again an extra free body diagram. So similar to frames, same thing is true. You end up one free body diagram that you haven't used, right? Which is this one. Use that to verify your answers. Actually, this one is not a bad idea to do that. BY is 250. This one was 130. How much was CY? Right? This is a CY. This is, let's just verify that. Let's use this to verify the answer. So let's do that. So that is a step six. Since we have the time, let's do that. So let's say, what is summation of forces along Y should come out to be zero, right? So you have negative 20. Ay was negative 130, right? Cy is negative 80, right? <coughs> Plus. I'm pretty sure it should be 100, so why should be Yeah, yeah. Cy is 100. CY is 100? Yeah. So this was wrong? Yes. Good. Okay. So somebody gave me that. At least I didn't make that mistake, right? Somebody did. I'm not going to expose that individual. That's okay. So, okay. Plus 250, right? What happened? Zero. So that means the answers that we have derived are correct. So that is a confirmation. Okay, great.